Bible backwards from Revelation down to Genesis. And believe me, it gets difficult when you get into the Old Testament uh, because so many books overlap and are not in sequential order in the Bible. Uh, but we're backwards in chronological order. We looked at Malachi, which was about 100 years after uh, the return of the first exiles. And Malachi saw the backsliding and the uh, people and the priests in just 100 years of returning to the land. Uh, so a uh, terrible condition that he saw and reported. And then uh, we moved into Nehemiah, where he had heard the reports from uh, Persia that Jerusalem's walls and people were in bad shape and asked for permission to go uh, to try to remedy the situation. And uh, we saw the fact that he had earned a respectful position in uh, the uh, uh, king's cupbearer and the king uh, was granting his wishes for him to go back. And we noticed also uh, that he talked to God before he talked to the king. Uh, and as Nehemiah returns, he gives a uh, great uh, encouraging talk after inspecting the walls and the people uh, commit themselves to rebuild the walls. And so we pick up the story today uh, in chapter 3 as we see the fact that uh, there's going to be opposition. We saw that earlier in uh, the study of Nehemiah. But in chapters 3 through 6, we find the chronological uh, activity of building of the wall. And uh, we're going to take a look at chapter 3 just uh, by words rather than by actually reading the scriptures. Uh, we find in chapter 3, verses 1 through 31, that each family did its part, used the skills that they had, and focused on their task. Now, let me just stop there for a minute and say to you, isn't that a good application of the church functioning as it should? Each person has been spiritually gifted. Each person has a task for that gift. And these people had committed themselves not to what the other guy was going to do. They committed themselves to what they needed to do, where they were gifted, where they were talented. And they went about their work focusing and accomplishing uh, with their skills and with their abilities to do what they needed to do. Now, now you all know that nothing is easy and that any time you set out to do something for God, you can expect some opposition and some difficulties. So let's take a look at chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Now it came about that when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became furious and very angry and mocked the Jews. He spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy men of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Are they going to restore it for themselves? Can they offer sacrifices? Can they finish in a day? Can they revive the stones from the dust and rubble, even the burned ones? Now Tobiah, the Ammonite was near him and said, even what they are building, if a fox should jump on it, he would break their stones down or the wall, stone wall down. Hear, O God, our God, how we are despised. Return their reproach on their own heads and give them up for the plunder in a land of captivity. Do not forgive their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out before you, for they have demoralized the builders. So we built the wall, and the whole wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Did you notice the words that were used in verse 4? Did you notice the types of discouragement that often come when you try to do something for God? They mocked the Jews. I can remember when I first became a Christian and some of the people that I went to high school with and some of the people that I worked with mocked my Christianity. They also discouraged them by the size of the task. Have you been discouraged by the size of the task? The effort that it takes to mobilize people, uh, to try to teach them the gospel, 
Uh, have you been discouraged by the size of the task in reaching people for Christ? They discouraged them by the size of the task. And they belittled them. Oh, that's a, such an effective tool because most of us have a pretty self-esteem problem to start with. And then when somebody belittles you, calls them little feeble Jews and says that even if they were to build, a fox could jump on the walls and knock it down. They belittled them. Well, I want you to notice what Nehemiah and the people did as a result of this opposition, this ridicule. They didn't go and fight them. They didn't argue with them. They called out to God. And they said, God, vengeance is yours. <laughs> go ahead and take your vengeance. But I want you to notice most of all, verse 6, the people had a mind to work. Well, we all need to have a mind to work. It'd be real easy in this kind of uh, time that we're in where we're confined to our houses except for the essential things that have to be done. To stay in bed an extra length of time or to say, well, nobody's watching my videos anyway, so I just won't bother making my videos while we're locked up in our houses. No, the people had a mind to work. And we all need to have a mind to work, to be about God's business. Even if we can't get out of our houses, we can write notes, we can telephone, we can video call. We can study our scriptures. I noticed this morning as I got up that Lois was already in her chair reading her Bible, doing her morning devotion. Before some of the other mundane things that we had to do around the house, she was putting God first. And that's what we all need to do. We need to have a mind to work, put God first, talk to him, and do what we can, the work that's in front of us, the things that we've been gifted and skilled in. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you. Have a great day.